Tuesday to everybody. You know, after watching tape on, on Cal, really impressed with what uh, Coach Wilcox has, has put together for, uh, with his football team. Um, you look at the last two weeks especially, and uh, the team's playing at an extremely high level. They get a, a big win over Washington at home, and then to go to Pullman and take that one all the way down to the end uh, in, a, in a tough loss. They're playing really, really good football. You know, obviously defensively, um, one of the top 20 defenses in the country right now, and I've always thought that uh, good defense are built down the middle um, and, and, you, and you look at Chris Palmer you know you look at Evan Weaver and you look at Ashton Davis at free safety you, that knows that Mike and that free safety is three of the top players in our conference right now and it's no wonder you look up and they're one of the better defenses in our conference um, offensively um, when you look at him i a big fan of Patrick Laird uh, I think he, he's as blue-collar a runner as there is in our league and they're doing a really nice job of targeting him out of the backfield he's already been targeted over 40 times this season uh, coming out of the backfield so kind of a dual threat guy both as a runner and a, and as a receiver you know kind of trying to find their way at quarterback right now um, and it's two different style of quarterbacks, so we have to prepare for both because um, both of them have played in each in each game. So when you have McIlwain, you know, obviously a great athlete uh, that is a dynamic runner, almost like having a running back back there. Um, and, and then in Garbers, uh, you got you have a very good thrower and a kid that uh, uh, a kid that can make all the throws uh, on the field. So um, kind of have to focus on who's in the game um, and, and dictate our calls uh, off of that. That. Um, injury wise, you know, it was good to get Elijah Griffin back out here today. Uh, we'll monitor him through the week, but he practiced well today. I'll be able to give you more information by the end of the week, but hopefully we'll get him back. Um, Greg Johnson is out with a shoulder injury. Uh, Iman Marshall is out with a foot and ankle sprain. Um, Chase Williams actually was back with us today and, and getting some practice. We'll monitor him through the week and see where he's at at the end. Giuliano Falanico uh, is in concussion protocol. Levi Jones is back uh, with us practicing after a hip pointer. Uh, Matt Fink has started throwing uh, his throwing routine. He's not uh, cleared to be hit uh, at all, but can, as you saw, start throwing today. Michael Pittman was held out due to a shoulder, and Stephen Carter was held out due to a high ankle sprain. With that, I'll take any questions that you got. What's your feeling on Pitt and being for the Um, You know, I, I'll probably be, I, Pitt I think is going to be hard. Uh, I think it's going to be hard unless it just really improves really fast. Um, um, you know, probably a better chance the following week, but we'll see by the end of the week. Uh, Biggie tells me, Coach, I'm playing, uh, but, you know, anytime you have Anytime you have a, a an ankle, ankle foot and ankle sprain um, uh, on the inside, you, you, you're going to monitor it, and, and the doctors will let me know by the end of the week. I can promise you, with both kids, it, those two kids want to play so bad, it's it's unbelievable. But we're going to do right by them and, and make sure they're healthy and ready to go out there. But uh, I'll, I'll know probably more about Thursday, Joe. Would Almond Ron be the candidate to kind of replace? Pittman on the outside just because he's been there before or yeah, so, the way Devin had last week? Yeah, so what we're going to do is end up, uh, you know, having Tyler and Amara outside with Bayless inside as well as using Devin to, and Josh and Bebe to be able to roll with those two guys and, and Trayvon Sidney inside. So we've got a true two deep uh, at, at, at in our three wides package right now and feel confident in all six kids to step in and, and make plays. Cal brings a lot of looks on yeah. defense. How do you prepare JT for something like that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not easy. I, I, I told the team today, you know, going back and watching last year's game, this was probably the toughest game for Sam last year because of uh, the coverage disguises. Uh, they do a tremendous job of showing you one thing and, and bailing to another, showing you cover zero and bailing to two, showing you cover two, and then all of a sudden here comes pressure. Um, uh, They've all, you know, Coach Wilcox is a masterful uh, defensive coach, and then you put Coach DeRuta with them. Um, that combination, they make it hard on you. And, uh, and, and not only going that, but jumping in of three, four fronts, four down fronts, five, one jam fronts, you know. So you really have to have great communication, not only, not only for your quarterback to be able to see, but also that offensive line and, and running backs and protection. So, um, you know, identifying and communication is going to be key in this game. Clay, last week you put JT under center. Are mm -hmm. those packages that you can expand upon, or is it just specially designed for short yardage? 
No, we um, we use the under center package, you know, in, in different scenarios that uh, for different plays, basically, um, and you know we we used it in short yardage goal line, um, and and uh, it was effective. It was something that we wanted to use last week and continue using, um, and uh, it was good to see it work last week, and hopefully it'll do be that way again. What is the Cedric Ware meant to the team? Um, he's just, he, he reminds me so much, Adam, of, of like Justin Davis. He's that blue collar, every day, show up and grind worker, you know, and even in the games. You know, there's probably men that run faster, probably men that are, are bigger, maybe stronger, but you're going to look up and every day you're going to get his best effort. And usually his best effort is, is 100 yard games or more. And I was so proud of him uh, to be able to have a 200 yard game and, and, and be able to carry the load like he did uh, the other night uh, was great. Um, and uh, uh, with that combination of him and Vi when Steven went down uh, was was really nice. Just two physical style runners, but he's he's a blue collar kid. He shows up every day, and and, and uh, it doesn't matter if it's a game or practice. You're going to get his best. The last couple of years, he honestly was behind Rojo and even other guys. Mm -hmm. Has he proven something to even you this year? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it happens that way. I remember it's amazing because it, it's kind of like Buck Allen. It's kind of like Justin Davis. You know, it's it's sometimes. A, your most important year is your last. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you, for young people, they think it's their first, uh, but really it's your last year in, in college uh, that you want to have your best year um, before going on to the next level. And, uh, you know, I, I think Sid's showing a lot of people that he can be the next Buck Allen. He can, he can be the next Justin Davis, that he can perform not only at this high level, but, but on Sundays too. And really proud for him. Clay, What's JT the... is, oh, <laughs> Clay's, uh... JT's never been tested like this, never had to grind like he has these last three months. What have you learned about him at this point of the season? Yeah, that he can just handle adversity and, and keep poised about it and uh, not get over emotional and um, not get frustrated. You, you know, he's, he's a guy that I've really appreciated because he's taken it one week at a time. Whether things went good or whether things went bad, he kind of clears the slate. Um, it's kind of like a coach, to be honest with you. You, you know, you get that 24 hours after the game and then uh, you, whether you patted yourself on the back or, or, or kicked yourself in the butt um, you got to let it go and you got to move on to the next game and he's done that um, and, and that's probably the biggest thing that he showed me is whether things are good or bad um, that he's able to clear the slate and move on. Uh, what's the likelihood that Stephen Carr is available Saturday? Uh, not very likely no, just being honest. Play a little off topic but Today being an election day, do you ever talk to the team about voting or you know, those sorts of um, yeah. discussions? Yeah, we do. Um, you know, I, it was, I was proud that Coach Bax had his I voted sticker uh, right on this morning. And, and we do have those discussions with our team about having the availability to practice uh, what's the greatest thing in the world, which is our freedom <coughs> and our right to vote. And uh, there's a lot of uh, young men and women that have fought for us to provide uh, our freedom and, and the honor to, to be able to vote. So it is it is a topic of discussion and an opportunity for our kids to, to be able to go out there and I hope they all take that opportunity. Clay, what do you anticipate the <clears throat> secondary to look like going into Saturday in terms of the corner rotation? Um, you know, one, I got to find out who's going to be alive and, and, <laughs> and available. Um, you know, I, I think we've got a, a, a you know, a, be, a best case scenario plan and worst case um, scenario where practice, you know, we, we've been able to practice lock, you know, you have Lockett and you have a JNA that both can go play corner. They both can play nickel. A JNA can play safety. Um, you know, so we have some moving parts. You, you know, I, you could get an Elijah Griffin back, which could really help. You could get a Chase Williams back if they, that could help at safety in emergency position. Uh, you could hopefully maybe get a biggie back by the end of the week. So, you know, I, I think we've We've got it to where you know we've got six good men out there. Uh, hopefully, we'll gain a couple more uh, by the end of the week. Um, even even Double D Do Dominic Davis is working at nickel, so um, we've got a, we've got enough bodies to go out there. Uh, we'll, we're working different scenarios, and by the end of the week, I think by Thursday, we'll have it we'll have it settled in. Two one more. All righty, thanks, guys. Thank you.